Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. Welcome to the second part of the series of tutorials where you're learning how to create image slideshow using Greensock. In this part, you will learn how to set up the JavaScript file and how to set up a function and timeline to go to the next slide. Let's go straight into it. Now we can switch to Sublime Text and start writing our JavaScript code, okay? We'll type this manually because this is a Greensock tutorial, so I skipped, I sort of cheated a little bit on the HTML, CSS just to do it quickly. And now we can manually type everything in, in the main.js. So open the main.js and we'll replace the, our code will go here with setup variables. This is a section where we'll be targeting all our elements that we want to interact with. Okay, so the first one we want to get is the active slide. So active slide will be the element with dot active class. And that is the first slide, first home slide in each of the top and bottom containers. Okay, so we manually added the active class here and here as well. And in the JavaScript, we're targeting that element by targeting the dot active class. Okay, the next one will be home slide. Home slide will be all our slides with a class, so all our elements with home slide class. And then we want to get the navigation elements. Okay, so the pref, slide nav pref will be the previous button. So dot slide nav pref. And I can copy and paste the line and change the pref to next. Okay, so this is the li item. So if we switch to the HTML, scrolling down to the bottom, we're targeting this li item and the next item as well. Okay, so these two selectors will target these two elements. And we also want to target the links inside of it. Okay, so we'll duplicate these two lines, but we add the a tag inside of the slide nav pref and next. And we can change the variable name to slide nav pref a and slide nav next a. Alrighty. And the last item will be the hero. Okay, hero is the whole hero element. Okay, we close that with a semicolon and we target the dot hero here. These are all the elements we will be interacting with for now. And as you can see, the hero is the main container wrapping all inside the BCG container. Alrighty, so these are all our variables. And the first thing we want to do with the green so code we want to make sure that by default, we'll see the first slide and not the third one. To do that, we'll switch again to the sublime text and we'll create an init function, which will have this first twin inside of it. Okay, so type in function init, opening, closing brackets and curly brackets. And inside of it, we'll have our first twin, the twin light twin. Okay, so we will write a little comment so we know what we're doing. We want to hide all slides apart, apart from the active one. Okay, so that's pretty clear what we want to do. And the twin for this will be twin light. So twin light will change the method to set because we don't want it to animate. So we're using just the set and the element will be our home slide. Okay, so we're targeting the home slide, but we don't want all of them. We want all of them apart from the active one. Okay, so we're using the .NET, the jQuery dot not, not .NET, but the jQuery dot not method, and we're changing this to active slide. So basically we're targeting all home, all, all home slides but we're filtering the active slide away from this selector, okay? That means that now we are targeting all slides apart from the active one and we can remove the 
duration because set doesn't have any duration and we'll have just the vars which will be auto alpha zero so we're setting it auto alpha zero we're setting the auto alpha zero on every home slide apart from the active slide to zero okay so if this works fine we'll see that all of them disappear and to run this function on page load we'll need to run it like this okay so again add a little comment run init function underneath and if we've done everything right we should refresh the page and we should see the first item first slide visible and all of the other ones hidden okay so if we review it in the browser in the dev tools you'll see that the home slide two and three have the style the inline style applied to it visibility hidden and opacity zero so that is our auto alpha zero in place and the active one is active so active slide has the default css okay so this works fine and this is the first first twin we did just to recap it so we use the twin light set method on our home slide apart from the active slide and we'll set the auto alpha to zero if you're familiar with greensock this is a very simple twin if you're not then i recommend you to go and check out some of my basic tutorials on my blog where we explaining this in more detail but we'll move on to another thing Okay, the, the next twin we want to do in the init function, we want to disable the arrow down on arrow down on page load. Okay, so this means when the page loads, we want to disable this arrow because there is no previous slide at this stage. Okay, so to do that, we again will write the twin light dot set the element will be the slide nav pref so the previous slide element and the auto alpha will be 0 0.2 0 0.2 should make this fade out on page load you see the arrow down is now faded out because at that moment we don't want to see it fully visible we want the users to be able to only go one way okay so this is how we set up the first two twins in the init function and we're loading this function on page load now we can create a function that will detect the click on the navigation button go to the next slide so when the user clicks on the next button we want to navigate we want the slide to go up okay so this will be we'll be targeting the slide nav next which we've already set up in the variables above and we want to get the click event okay so click inside of it will write function opening closing brackets and opening closing square brackets and inside of the function we'll also type e e that's the event of this click and we want to prevent the default link behavior so we'll type e dot prevent default okay this prevents the default behavior so if you know that you're probably familiar with this if you've got a link and you want to trigger some event you don't want the page to jump to the top so this e dot prevent default does exactly that and we want here go to next slide we want to trigger a function go to next slide okay this is a function which we haven't created yet so let's create it above and this function will go to next slide function go to next slide opening closing brackets and square brackets and inside of it for now let's just put little alert go to next alrighty so this when the user clicks on this button 
we will go to next slide, which will return this alert. So if this works fine, we should be able to see it in a browser. When I click on the arrow up, we'll see the message popping up, go to next. Okay, so this works fine. Now we will remove the alert and create a green sock timeline because that's the right moment. This is just a verification that we've got it running at the right moment. So let's go ahead and remove the alert line from the go to next slide function. And we'll go again to the click event. Okay, what we want to do, we want to know which slide we should be animating in and which slide we should be animating out. Okay, so we need to pass two variables into or two parameters to the go to next slide function. Okay, so ideally we would have something like slide out, comma, slide in, going, passing through to this go to next slide function and we can copy and paste it in here. Okay, what the slide out and slide in is, we'll need to work out, but this is what we need to do. Okay, so on click, when the user clicks, we want to get, so when the user clicks, we want to get the current slide, which is now in view, and we want to get the ID or the class or whatever we're gonna do of the slide which should come in. Okay, so that's why we passing these two parameters to the go to next slide and also in here as well. Okay, so inside of the click function, we'll get two variables. The words of first one will be slide out. And this is the slide which is currently active. Okay, so this is dot home slide dot active. So the one which has class active is the slide out. And the slide which should come in would be the dot home slide dot active dot next home slide. Okay, so dot home slide. Slide out is the one with class active. So by default, this is the first slide because we've manually added the class active to it. The slide in is the one next to it. Okay, so the following slide after that is our slide in. Okay, later on, we'll change the class to the right elements. But for start, these two selectors are the right ones for slide out and slide in. Okay, now we can finally start writing the timeline inside of the go to next slide function. We'll stay inside of the go to next slide function and we'll start, we'll set a couple of variables. So the first one will be the timeline. So new timeline light will be the timeline we'll be adding our twins to and then we want to animate few elements. So let's figure out what the elements are. The first one will be H1 from the slide out. Okay, so slide out dot find and we want to find the H1 element inside of the slide out. We can copy and paste the same line, but change it to P. We're targeting the paragraph from the slide. And we can copy and paste the, both lines and change the slide out to slide in. Okay, so I'm just copy and pasting, overriding slide out to slide in. Again, we're targeting the H1 and P from both slides. Okay, so these are the elements we'll be animating. And then we can create the timeline. So go to the next slide, timeline. And here will be our twins for the timeline. Adding twins to a timeline is pretty straightforward. We'll just type in TL dot and I'll type it on the new line dot set. The first element we want to set the CSS we want to change the CSS of it will be the slide in. And we want to change the Y offset to 100%. Okay, this will push the slide in all the way down outside of the viewport. 
so we can then animate it in. So at the start of the timeline, we're setting the sliding offset to 100%. We also change the auto alpha to one, because by default we've set it to auto alpha zero. And we also add a class active to this slide. Okay, so to, for that we use the class name method plus equals active. Okay, so this will add the class active to the slide in. And the second twin we'll add is also dot set. This time we will set it to the slide out. Okay, so slide out, slide out. And we want to change the class name. We want to remove the class active. Okay, so we're doing the opposite. We're removing the class from that element. Okay, so let's review this in the browser. Refresh the page. Oops, and something happened. We shouldn't see the third slide. Uh, uncode syntax error, unexpected token comma. Looks like I've got two commas somewhere in the code. And yeah, we've got a two commas here. So I'll leave this error in the video. I'm not gonna edit it out because I'm sure you might come across similar issues. So if I refresh the page now, there is no error and we'll still see the first slide. That's what we want. Okay, now when I click the arrow to go to the next slide, nothing happens visually, but there is some changes in the HTML. So we should see the class being applied to different elements. So I refresh the page, look at the what we've got on the page load. We've got active slide, the first one and visibility hidden. If I click the next, you see the class is removed from the first slide and it's put on the second one. And also the translate is set to 100%. Okay, so this is correctly done. So if I look at the position of the bottom slide two, you could see how it's down at the bottom here. Okay, so now it's at the right place and we can animated it in. We'll firstly animate the active slide up out of the viewport using the dot two method. And it will be slide out. The duration will be 0 0.5. And we will be changing the Y offset to minus 100%. Okay, so it will fly outside of the viewport to the top. And we also change the ease, ease to power three dot ease in and out. Okay, so this will give it a nice ease out. And we want to make sure that this twin happens at the start of the timeline. So we'll use the absolute positioning of zero. Okay, we'll duplicate the same line and we'll add the same twin for the slide in which is the one by default below the viewport. Same duration, we'll change the Y offset to minus equals 100, which means that we are removing 100% from the current position, means it will end up at a zero position, which is the CSS position of this slide. Same easing and same absolute position. So both of these twins, both of these lines of code are running at the same time. Okay, so if we review this in a browser, we should see the slide coming in when we click on the next arrow. Okay, exactly what we wanted. If we review the HTML, you should see, if I refresh the page, we should see what's happening with our slides. I click on the next. Slide two is active and the matrix at the end of the twin is a zero. But at the start of the timeline, we are setting it to 100%, which means it moves from the bottom. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. You might slow it down to see exactly what's happening. But I think it's pretty straight forward. What these two lines of code doing. Okay, we also want to twin the h1 and paragraph. So when we click next, 
we want to slowly also tween the text as well. So we'll add one more tween to this timeline. We'll jump back to the sublime text. And after the first two set twins, we'll create one more two twin. Okay, this time we want to animate the H1 and paragraph of the slide out. So we're animating two elements at the same time, means we need to wrap them in square brackets. So slide out H1, comma, slide out P will be the two elements we want to animate. The duration will be 0 0.3 and the vars will be Y minus equals 15 pixels. Okay, so we're moving it up by 15 pixels and also fading it out. So setting auto alpha to zero and we can give it the same ease out. So we copy and pasting from the previous twins. And we also want to animate this at the start of the timeline. We need to include the zero as the absolute position. Okay, so this will animate the H1 and paragraph slightly up and fade out when we click the button to go to the next slide. And at the end of the, twi uh, end of the timeline, we'll add last twin. This time will be from two. Okay, so from two, the element will be again two elements, the slide in H1, comma slide in P. So these two elements, the duration will be the same, so 0 0.3. And from is the position, from vars will be the position from which we want to animate. Okay, so we'll set it to Y plus equals 20 pixels. Okay, so it will add 20 pixels to the CSS position. So it will start from a little bit below where the original position is. And we want to animate from auto alpha zero. So it will, it will fade in and we want to fade it in to auto alpha, auto alpha one and the Y zero. Okay, so it will end up at the right CSS position and the ease, I'll just move it slightly to the right. Oops, the ease will be power one, slightly less stronger ease, ease in out, and the duration or the, the location when we want to include this twin will be 0 0.3, okay, with a slight delay. So all the other twins happening at the start of the timeline, but then 0 0.3 seconds in, we want to animate the H1 and paragraph of the slide in into a view. So this is the final twin of our timeline. So let's review it in a browser and see what we've got. Okay, we've got a syntax error. Let's see what it is. Syntax error, bang, bang, bang comma ancorena unexpected token dot means we've got a syntax error somewhere is in is out uh, dot 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 from slide one comma comma out to alpha is needs a colon is colon power one is in is out is the correct syntax and this was the issue and now you can see that the H1 animates out and the new one with a slight delay slides in. Okay. Again, clicking the next arrow will fade out the original text and then bring out the next one with a slight delay. Okay, so this is pretty neat. As you can see, we've got an issue when we get to the last slide, it still tries to find the next slide when there is nothing to animate to. Okay, so this is something we need to fix. And the fix is very simple. We'll just wrap the timeline into if statement. Okay, so we'll type in if. The statement we will check for is the slide in dot length. We want to check whether it's zero or not. Okay, so we're checking 
if the sliding exists, then we will play the timeline. And if it doesn't, we won't. Okay, so we'll copy the closing bracket from this statement and we paste it after the timeline and we'll also indent everything in. Okay, so this if statement will make sure that the timeline only plays when there is a slide in, okay, when the slide in length doesn't equal to zero. So check it in the browser, we'll refresh the page and we shouldn't be able on the last slide to go any further, which is exactly what we wanted. And the last two tweaks to this function will be related to our navigation. We want to enable the arrow pointing down when we are on the second slide and also on the last slide, we want this arrow to fade out. Okay, so going back to Sublime Text, we'll first fade out the button to go to previous slide and that will be tween light set and the element will be the slide nav previous so slab nav pref and we'll set the auto alpha to one okay so this will enable the arrow pointing down when we are on the second slide and then we'll need to also write a twin light so twin light this time we'll fade it in the oh sorry fade it out the slide nav next over the duration 0 0.3 and the auto alpha will be 0 0.2 but we don't want this to happen straight away on click we want to make sure it only happens on the last slide so we'll need to wrap this in a if statement okay the if statement will wrap around the in, around the tween light and we'll need to work out what this statement will be okay for that we can go up in into the variables above and we'll create two more variables which we'll reuse in the if statement the first one we'll get is the index okay so we want to get the index of the slide in okay so slide in dot index will return a number which is the index number of the slide coming into a view. And then we want to check the total number, the size of our slides. Okay, so the size equals, and we'll get the top dot home slide length dot length, length, that's correct, Le length, length. <laughs> pardon my English, but uh, yeah, my spelling is not the best. Luckily, we've got the auto correct corrections in Sublime Text. So we're checking for the length of the home slide and we call it size. Now we can compare the index and size. And when these two are the same, we will play this twin. Okay, so this could be index index so when the index equals so three equals size then we want to play this twin okay so let's see if this works we'll refresh the page and when we on the last slide we've got this fading nicely out okay so just to recap how this was created we are getting index maybe the good thing would be here we console console log the index plus comma and size okay so this should return it should console log every time we click on the button it should console log two numbers for us as you can see we've got two and three and three and three and when these two are the same so that's the if statement we are fading out the button to go to the next slide okay so that's that's how we wrapped it in an if statement and then it doesn't do anything else okay so that's the if statement explained so we can remove the console log from here okay so we've got everything working fine inside of the go to next slide function
And now I want to challenge you a little bit. You can pause the video now and see if you could come up with the function and with the twins and timelines for going the opposite direction. Okay, so we'll not do anything different than going the, to the next slides, but you should be able now just take the code and change the values, create the right function, rename the functions, whatever you think is the right approach to work out the different direction. Okay, so challenge yourself a little bit and I'll reveal how I created the opposite direction in a minute. So pause it now and challenge yourself. Now we've got it worked out, we know how to go to the next slide. As I said, I want you to try to go and create the function to go to previous slide. And in my next video, I'll reveal how to do it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Are you enjoying this series of GreenSock tutorials? And do you want to learn more about GreenSock? Check out my GreenSock workshop, where you can learn how to build three other interactive projects from start to finish. Visit greensocktutorials.com for more details.